Hello children, how are you all? I am fine here and I expect the same from you. I am Dakshayani, handling biology from Bardasnar Metric Higher Secondary School, Arakonam. Children, today we are going to discuss 12th standard zoology, the first lesson, reproduction in organisms. So, what is the name of the lesson children? Reproduction in organisms. And we have discussed the previous parts and now we are going to study about the asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, what do you mean by asexual reproduction? It does not involve the fusion of gametes. It involves only the single parent. And now we are going to study what are the types, right? And the first we are going to discuss about the sporulation. Sporulation in amoeba. What do you mean by sporulation children? If an organism reproduces by producing spores, right? It is said to be sporulation. And now we are going to discuss how it takes place in amoeba. Just look at this picture children. This is a, this is amoeba, right? During unfavorable condition, right? That is uh, when the climate is too hot, extreme temperature and heavy rainfall. In some adverse conditions, amoeba undergo the special mode of reproduction called as this sporulation. First look at this picture children, amoeba and what is this? This is a nucleus. This is a nucleus, right? And these are the chromatin blocks. Chromatin blocks that is the genetic material now what happened the nucleus breaks and the nucleus starts to grow so here nucleus breaks and what is this this is a nuclei Nucleus starts to grow and later what happens the cytoplasm surrounds each nuclei and at this stage we call this as a spores that is pseudopodiospores spores right and later when the condition favorable condition comes back the spore case breaks the amoeba wall breaks and individually each spores are liberated this we call it as a spore and what is this children this is a nucleus and this is the cytoplasm and this is the spore case it's a spore case and what happens the spore case remain the spore case remain attached to the amoeba until it is fully developed and this is the young amoeba that is the daughter amoeba young amoeba and this is the nucleus and this is the finally this is the cytoplasm so this is how the sporulation takes place in amoeba first the spores Chromatin, the nucleus breaks into fragments. Later, each nucleus is surrounded by the spore case. And when the favorable condition comes back, the amoeba, the wall breaks and individually all the spores are liberated. And later, they emerge as an individual amoeba. And here, the young amoeba are genetically identical to the parent. So, this is how the sporulation takes place in amoeba. And next, we are going to study about the Budding, right? This is another method of asexual reproduction, children. What do you mean by budding? If an organism reproduces by means of producing the buds, we call this as a budding. And here, budding, there are two types one is a exogenous, and another one is a endogenous. Exogenous. And another one is a endogenous. What do you mean by exogenous children? If the buds are formed on the outer surface of an organism, it is said to be the exogenous. Here you see children, this is the individual hydra and when the plenty of food is available, there will be some small outgrowths. Like this a small bud will be formed on the outer surface of the hydra and later the bud starts to grow and the gastric, gastric cavity is connected with the parent. 
that is the parents gastric cavity and their buds uh, gastric cavity are connected to each other and the bud receives a complete nutrition from the parent and later the bud starts to grow it produces the tentacles and it mouth everything is small and finally when it is fully grown it constricts what do we mean constricts it becomes very less here it re get reduced here and it gets separated and it becomes an individual hydra this is how the exogenous budding takes place in hydra so what is the example for exogenous budding children hydra hydra right and now we are going to study about the endogenous budding what do we mean endo endo means inside if the buds are formed down the inner side of an organism it is said to be endogenous the best example for endogenous is sponges sponges you all know children it belongs to the phylum porifera during the unfavorable condition what happens the sponges reproduce by means of producing the special internal buds called as the gemmule so what is the structure children it is a gemmule it is a gemmule even during the due to the climatic conditions the sponges may get destroyed but gemmules remains intact that is without any destruction and this gemmule has two structures one is the outer membrane one is the outer membrane and another one is a inner membrane inner membrane and here internally they have many buds internal buds are formed in the inside and the food laden cells we call it as archaeocytes archaeocytes right till the unfavorable condition the gemmules remains intact and internal buds is present inside and when the condition favorable condition comes back the internal buds get liberated throughout this opening this opening we call as micropyle what we call children micropyle and later the internal buds germinated and develop into the individual sponge so this is how the endogenous budding takes place in sponges so what are the two types of budding children exogenous endogenous right kavya i will ask you some questions right what are the internal buds of the sponges called yes very good clap your hands for kavya very good gemmules yes it's an important neat question children and what are the food laden cells formed inside what is the name of that archaeocytes right and now we are going to study about the another method of asexual reproduction that is a fragmentation what do you mean by fragmentation children if an organism reproduces by producing fragments fragments means what a single body get cut into many parts right and if it reproduce by means of producing fragments it is said to be fragmentation and we are going to study the fragmentation in sea anemone what is this children very beautiful right it is a sea anemone it is a uh, it belongs to the phylum nidaria second phylum is there right nidaria and now we are going to see how it takes place in the sea anemone right and this in sea anemone it undergoes the special process called as pedal laceration what is this children pedal laceration and now we can see how it takes place right when this is a sea anemone and when the sea anemone start get detached and starts moving it undergoes some depression this is called as a pedal laceration at the lower portion it forms some small mound like structure the small part cu cuts off from the sea anemone like this right and later it starts to produce uh, it undergoes some development it produces the tentacles that is a nidaria mouth everything and finally it becomes the sea anemone it starts to develop and finally it become the sea anemone like this so this is how the pedal laceration takes place it's an important question children fragmentation in sea anemone is called pedal laceration so when the sea anemone get detached and moves the pedal disc breaks off this pedal disc when i mean when this anemone moves the pedal disc breaks off and lobes are constricted from the left over pedal disc and each lobe develops into the entire organism right many lobes are formed 
and from each lobe individual sea anemone starts to grow so this is said to be the pedal laceration in sea anemone right and next we are going to study the another type of fragmentation that is in tapeworm right we are going to study about the fragmentation in tapeworm children and this tapeworm this is our this is a tapeworm it is the internal parasite endoparasite it is present inside our intestine right and here it undergoes the it has many fragments children the fragments of tapeworm we call it as proglottid what we call as a proglottid and it undergoes the special type of fra fragmentation right and here you see this is a tapeworm and it has many segments throughout the body right so here this stage we call it as a mature immature what we say it is a immature right and near the stomach region we call this as mature mature proglottid proglottid is a segment and finally at the edge end it has the fertilized eggs that fragments we call it as gravid proglottid what we call children gravid proglottid so the fragments are classified as immature proglottid mature proglottid and gravid proglottid and here the gravid proglottid contains the fertilized eggs fertilized eggs and tapeworm we know it has two types of host right one in the pig body intestine and another one in the body of the human right so it undergoes the two types of it has two host so this shedding of the gravid proglottid is called as apolysis so the tapeworm repeatedly sheds off the gravid proglottid from its body this process is called as a apolysis and later this gravid proglottid what it develop when it uh, it's consumed by it takes place in the human body when it is consumed by the pig the fertilized eggs get hatched and developed in the pig's body so here the fragmentation in tapeworm we call this as a apolysis and here these proglottid contain the embryos and entering the host pig it develops into the new individual so i will ask you some question children just listen saumya just answer my question what is the fragmentation in sea anemone called yes very good that is pedal laceration what is the fragmentation in tapeworm called apolysis yes very good children and next we are going to study about the regeneration right before going to regeneration let us see some of this right so what is the children it is a lizard with a normal tail and what happens due to some accident the tail of the lizard gets cut and later what happens now the lizard is without the tail and later the lizard undergoes the special type of reproduction called as the what is this it is a regeneration a new tail starts to develop and finally the new tail is formed so the topic we are going to discuss is about the regeneration and regeneration is of two types children one is a morpholaxis and another one is a epimorphosis so first type is a morpholaxis what do i mean by morpholaxis if the entire body is formed from the cut off fragments right it is said to be morpholaxis the best example is that hydra right you see children it's a hydra due to some accident the hydra get cut into pieces and later each part develops into the entire organism so this is the regeneration in hydra and we can see some other examples for morpholaxis so yes just you look at this picture children here this planaria gets cut off and develop into the individual organism this this is a planaria it belongs to the phylum platyhelminthes and here you see it uh, what it cuts into three fragments right head the middle part and the tail later each fragment develops into the individual organism so if a uh, entire organism is formed from the cut off fragments this we call it as a what regenerate morpholaxis just look at this picture 
planaria cuts off and later it develops into the individual planaria complete development right and next we are going to study about the another type children epimorphosis right what i mean by epimorphosis if only the last body parts are replaced in the case of morphalaxis the entire body is formed but in the case of uh, epimorphosis only few last fragments right understood children morphalaxis means what we say entire parts to get developed and epimorphosis it is a replacement of the it is the replacement of the last body parts right and it is of two types one is a reparative and another one is a restorative what do you mean by reparative children for example if any tissues get damaged the organ repairs itself for example the best example is our liver liver tissues if it get damaged the liver has a capacity to re regenerate its damaged tissues so reparative so reparative regeneration example is regeneration of the damaged liver tissues and restorative restorative means for example best example is a starfish due to some accidents if one arm of that starfish is lost it it has a capacity to regenerate its new arm like this you see children here the arm is lost but here it regenerates its new arm so the example for rest restorative regeneration is starfish so what are the things we discussed in regeneration children one is a morphalaxis and another one is a epimorphosis morphalaxis example hydra planaria right very good and next epimorphosis example reparative liver tissues and restorative starfish very good children okay children till this the asexual reproduction comes to an end so far we have discussed about the binary fission multiple fission and then encystment in amoeba strobilization and later we discussed in today we discussed about the what sporulation budding and then regeneration with this the asexual reproduction comes to an end so children go through the study material and the assessment along with this chapter attached within the description so you might have understood how far you learned the topic thank you children have a nice day I am Ivarani from Plus Two. I am Sandhya from Plus Two. We are participating in state level beach volleyball competition. Hail to Tuttugudi!